Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Saving the Company Money. A bunch of years ago, I rocked an IT support at a big company. We had three sections, desktop, server, mainframe. I was in mainframe. Desktop and server used a third-party ticketing system that included first-level support. Mainframe didn't use it often, but still had accounts to open slash close tickets for the rare time we needed it. One day, my desktop flaked out. I called the help desk and locked the ticket like any other user. A while later, I got a call from the head of desktop, who was many levels above me. He was mad that I had called the help desk. He had to pay a bunch of money for my special support account. And he had to pay money every time someone called the help desk. He told me in no uncertain terms that I was never to call the help desk. I was instead to log and direct my own tickets. I pushed back, pointing out that I wouldn't know where to direct the tickets in most cases. He responded via email that I could direct the tickets to any reasonable queue and that his people would figure it out. Thankfully for me, he reiterated in email that I was never ever to call the help desk and should instead log and direct all tickets. Jump forward a few months. Each support function gets a bonus if they stay compliant with service levels throughout the year. 100% compliance gets you a bonus. Less does not. Desktop is pushing hardest. The head of desktop stands to get a $30,000 payout if they get 100% and zero if they don't. In that job, priority 1 tickets required a 15 minute response time. An EP1 ticket that took over 15 minutes to respond to meant a loss of bonus. One day, when I'm working on a mainframe upgrade, my desktop crashes. Again. Since the mainframe's down and I'm the only one available to bring it back up, it's a P1 ticket. So I log into the ticketing system, properly enter my P1 ticket and throw it into a reasonable queue. The general desktop support queue. And then I wait. The wait comes because I know the system does not specifically flag P1 tickets. There's no alert or warning or push notification that tells you a P1 ticket has entered your queue. I was aware that the help desk manual required calling the queue owner for a P1 ticket to get around this issue, but I couldn't call the help desk, remember? And I didn't have access to the handbook to know who to call, as I told the head of desktop earlier. So I wait. I wait until the queue tells them at the 15 minute mark that they have just gone out of compliance. No 100%, no bonus, all gone. I get pulled into a conference call with the head of my division the head of desktop, the CIO and other big wigs. Desktop demands to know why my ticket didn't root properly. I explain it. Desktop demands to know who told me not to call the help desk. Why, you did sir. You told me never to do so. I have the email right here. Would you like to refresh your memory? The CIO jumps in. I'd certainly like to see it. I throw it up on the screen for all to see. The insistence that I never call help desk. My reminder that I don't know how to route tickets and his response to do, well, what I had just done. Desktop tried to pin it back on me, but thankfully my head, the CIO and the other heads all recognized that it was his fault and put the blame squarely on him. He lost his bonus, but also later that year, his job. Apparently he'd been a jerk other places and this was the last straw. The next story is called a close relationship with Jesus. This happened at the retail flooring store that I used to work for back in the early 2000s. It was my turn as reigning employee of the month to pick our next employee of the month. This meant a gift card, a nice parking spot, weekday only shifts for the entirety of the next month, the works. The owner's daughter, Maggie, a hardcore Christian, on the very same day she was promoted to showroom manager, puts me aside and says, I don't care who you pick, but this person has to be prayerful and have a close relationship with Jesus. She would badger and harass me all month, forcing me to join her in prayer so that the Holy Spirit could guide me in picking the right crusader of the Lord. Yep, all that hot steaming garbage. Her parents were Christian as well, but not of Maggie's ilk. They never enforced their beliefs on anyone, never prayed in front of us, never praised Jesus or God in front of us. Just overall very respectful and aware that the world is diverse the day to announce my pick comes. I just recently accepted a position elsewhere, unbeknownst to anyone. I've had enough of the holy Kool-Aid. So I decided to be extra compliant with Maggie's directives. At our beginning of the month morning powwow, I choose our very hardworking and deserving warehouse attendant, Abdullah. 
a prayerful man of Islamic faith. Once everyone went about their morning, Maggie pulls me into her office and asks me why I disobeyed her orders. I explained to her that I was 100% compliant. Abdullah would kneel in prayer, facing Mecca five times every day, regardless of where he was and that he and Jesus, our Guatemalan carpet installer, were besties and roommates. Maggie hit me with, may the Lord forgive you for this grave error in judgment, blah blah blah. I rocked out of her office while she was in mid prayer. She never spoke to me, never even made eye contact with me for the rest of my remaining time there. The last story is called Tell Them. My sister's previous employment was with a branch of a Swedish retail store. They sell expensive, luxurious furniture. When my sister was working there, they had about 20 people working the floor, the highest being the regional manager. He's also the only Swedish in the store. There were also 5 people working in the higher office and the rest were floor attendants. Each person in this higher office covered a different part of the store. There were an accountant, a biller, an HR, a purchaser and a head office, to whom basically everyone reported. My sister was the biller. The purchaser, let's call him Jack, was a competent guy. He did his job to near perfection and would often help others with theirs, as well as went out on the floor interacting with people. But apart from the high office, floor attendants resented him. Not publicly, but my sister was paying enough attention to notice. Nobody would say anything though. They just said he's creepy. Until one day, when the boss, the Swedish guy, came in. He would often work remotely and only came in during disarray hours. Apparently, when he's about to enter the store, he saw from outside the window Jack pestering a female floor attendant. She was clearly very annoyed. The boss observed for a while and eventually caught the guy placing his hands on her ties. He immediately called the office, all five of them, into a meeting and asked Jack to clarify his intentions. Jack said they are just playing around. Now, as sickening as it may sound, in my country this is somewhat normal. But because the boss was not from my country, he saw this as a major issue. Despite Jack trying to plead that it's nothing, he decided to launch a storewide investigation into the higher office as well, my sister included, because he thought they were covering for Jack. My sister said she actually thought she'd be fired, or at least reprimanded. She had never seen him so serious before. The result was alarming. Each and every female floor attendant, six or seven of them said they'd been pestered by Jack at least once. Some even said he touched them without consent. The boss asked why nobody stepped up. They said they were ashamed and feared retaliation. He then questioned the high office to find out that they were too busy to notice what was happening. Also, nobody ever threatened retaliation. People just assumed there would be, because it's usually what happens in my country. After a week and a half, another meeting was scheduled, in which Jack was given the option to resign or be fired. No action was taken against everyone else in the high office, but they were told, quite firmly, that this kind of neglect could never happen again. Even at that meeting, Jack still insisted that it was nothing. He'd spent the whole duration of the investigation complaining to everyone in the store, including the people he harassed, that the boss was overreacting. People just gave him the stink eye, but he didn't seem to care. Things were quiet for a week or two, and then it got interesting. One day, the head office lady received a phone call from Jack, during which he asked that they'd be his reference for his new interviews. She was taken back a bit and asked him, you want to make us your reference? Yes, I believe I had done my work well enough for you guys to put on a good word. It's true, he's very efficient. In fact, they'd had a hard time finding his replacement. They ended up taking a portion of his work for months while looking for someone suitable. But the commotion? Oh, that. I'm sure it's nothing. Just tell the truth and I think they'll understand. But, but, look, I won't ask for more. If someone calls, just tell them the truth. I'm sure it's nothing. Apparently, Jack still thought if people heard about it, they would agree with him. When she got off the phone, she was still stuttering. When everyone knew what happened, they were as well. Nobody knew what to do with it, so they informed their boss. He said it's fine, if that's what Jack wanted. Starting the following day, he'd come to the store every day. He also instructed everyone that if it's a call about Jack, it's to be directed to him. When the call finally came, the whole office stopped working and listened. My sister said that they could only hear his side of the conversation, but it's pretty easy to see the whole picture. The boss was praising Jack with words that would even make the ugliest of witches look like a fairy godmother. Anything you need to worry about? Oh, it's just that incident that gave us no choice but to let him go. 
the other side asked something. I'm sure he's told you, but he put his hand on one of our female employees without her consent. The other side asked something. Yes, just once. He did pause at this. That I caught him. Every other instance happened without my presence. The other side asked something else. Yes, I have the meeting record in which she agreed to resign in order for us not to take further actions. The other side said something. Sure, just contact me via this number. If you want to know anything else, I'd be happy to help. Two days later, Jack called the head office lady again to ask if anyone contacted them for his reference. She said yes and assured him they were telling whoever called the truth about his performance. He said it's strange because he was rejected in his latest interview. I wonder what could have been the reason. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and would like to support me, please subscribe and hit the like button. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.